Today's video is about a tech giant whose products are now present in every household all over the world. Yes, we are talking about Sony Electronics. But did you know that the company started from a radio repair shop in the bomb-damaged Shirokia department store building in the Nihonbashi district of Tokyo? Sony Corporation is a global leader in electronics manufacturing and one of the most recognizable brands in the industry. Before moving forward, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos. It all started when Masaru Ibuka opened a radio repair shop in the ruined Shirokiya department store in Tokyo's Nihonbashi neighborhood in September 1945, just after the war's conclusion. His wartime research partner, Akio Morita, joined him the next year, and the two of them, together with a few others, established the Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation on May 7, 1946. Their Type G tape recorder was the first of its kind in Japan. Morita met Ibuka while constructing a heat-seeking missile guidance system and a night vision rifle site during World War II. Ibuka was a bomb-damaged Tokyo Department Store's radio repairman after the war. In May 1946, the two individuals formed a partnership with $500 borrowed and registered their company. Morita and Ibuka then transferred their firm to a modest facility in southern Tokyo and built an unsuccessful rice cooker. In its first year, the company made $300 on less than $7,000 in sales. On the other hand, there was a rise in the demand for consumer products as a result of Japan's more robust economy. Morita and Ibuka then stopped making appliances for the house and instead focused on creating innovative electrical products with funding from Morita's father. Ibuka copied the design of a popular American tape recorder he saw in use at the Japan Broadcasting Corporation and created his own version of the device. When the first Japanese tape recorders were released in 1950, demand was modest. However, everything changed when Ibuka came across a U.S. military pamphlet titled 99 Uses of the Tape Recorder. The brochure was translated into Japanese and put to good use as a promotional item. Once its many benefits were known, TTK's customers, like the Tokyo Academy of the Arts, bought so many tape recorders that the company had to move to a bigger space in Shinagawa. The next development took place when an opera student, Norio Oga, sent many letters to TTK complaining about the device's recording quality. Morita was so taken by Oga's detailed and well-intentioned critiques that he asked him to consult on the design of a new recorder. After Oga agreed, the quality of the models that followed increased dramatically. Masaru Ibuka, ever on the lookout for cutting-edge technology, learned about a novel, small capacitor known as a transistor in 1952. The Bell Labs created transistor, offered a more compact and reliable alternative to bulkier vacuum tubes. Western Electric obtained the technology for the purpose of producing transistorized hearing aids. In order to create a portable, tubeless radio, Ibuka spent $25,000 on a patent license from Western Electric. In 1955, just a few months later, they were first introduced by a little American company named Regency Electronics. TTK began a mass production of transistor radios. Sony was the name given to the TTK radio after the Latin word for sound, Sonus. The Sony radio had great potential for sales, not just in the small Japanese market, but also in the more robust American market. Trading firms like Mitsui, Mitsubishi, and Sumitomo were formerly the standard for Japanese enterprises to use when exporting their wares abroad. Morita decided not to work with these trade businesses, even though they had a substantial US presence, since they were unfamiliar with his company's products and didn't share his business philosophy. When Morita visited New York, he conferred with executives from a number of major retailers. Morita turned down a 100,000 unit purchase from Bolova because the latter insisted on having its name on every single radio. Morita promised that his firm would not produce goods for competitors, and he was able to get a number of smaller orders that would allow it to develop at a steady rate. The year 1955 also saw the debut of the company's shares on the Tokyo Stock Exchange's over-the-counter market. After seeing the success of the Sony brand, Morita and Ibuka rebranded their firm as Sony Kabushiki Kaisha Corporation in January 1958. In 1959, Sony introduced a new type of television called a transistorized television. In the same year, following a disagreement with Delmonico Overseas, the firm Morita had hired to manage international sales, Sony opened a trade office in New York City and a second Sony Overseas in Switzerland. To lessen Sony's reliance on third-party manufacturers, the electronics giant formed Sony Chemicals in 1962 to manufacture adhesives and polymers. In 1965, Tektronics teamed up with a Japanese company to make oscilloscopes in Japan. In the early 1960s, Sony engineers kept making smaller versions of products that were based on the transistor. 
These included an AM-FM radio and a videotape recorder. By 1968, Sony engineers had created cutting-edge color TV technology. The Sony Trinitron generated a crisper image than traditional three-gun, three-lens sets because it only used one electron gun, which allowed for more precise beam alignment, and one less lens, which allowed for greater focus. Sony made a substantial financial investment in the Trinitron, which had been called the company's greatest bet on the assumption that the technological innovation would be sufficient to generate demand. In 1968, Sony Overseas also partnered with CBS Inc. to create phonograph recordings and opened a trade office in London. Norio Oga, the art student who had complained about Sony's early tape recorder and whom Morita had convinced to quit opera and join Sony in 1959, oversaw the project. Sony eventually grew to become Japan's dominant record producer. In 1970, Sony International opened a wholly owned company in West Germany to handle sales there. The Sony Walkman was a handheld tape player released in 1979. Even though Sony's engineers were reluctant to build a device that could just play and not record, Morita persisted in creating the product and threatened to retire if the Walkman was not a commercial success. Hundreds of millions of Walkmans were purchased all over the world. In 1982, Sony and the Dutch company Philips Electronics entered into a development arrangement that resulted in the first compact disc CD player. Incorporating Philips' laser system, Sony contributed its expertise in pulse code modulation. Sony had learned from their mistakes with Betamax, and a consensus was reached on a common format for compact discs and later digital video discs DVDs, among businesses across Japan, Europe, and North America. The following year, Sony unveiled the world's first consumer camcorder. Sony had a number of challenges in the early years of the 1990s. Ibuka and Morita both had strokes as Japan's economy slid into a depression that lasted 10 years, in 1992 and 1993 respectively. A formal retirement was announced for Morita in 1994, and he passed away in 1999. Sony's first loss of over $200 million was reported in 1993, when the company's founders were no longer in charge. However, Sony kept on developing and releasing new good despite the economic downturn. Its video game platform, the PlayStation, was first released in Japan in 1994. By 2002, the video gaming division was responsible for almost 10% of annual sales. Sony's online business, centered around the MMORPG EverQuest, was a key moneymaker as well. Many people were impressed by the company's entertainment division when they saw their first robot dog, Ibo, in 1999. When Sony's annual financial results continued to be less than seller in 2005, the board of directors promoted Howard Stringer from his position as chairman and CEO of Sony Corporation of America, even though many were taken aback by the nomination of a non-Japanese to manage the parent business, around two-thirds of Sony's employees globally were not Japanese. Sony's electronics division also named Stringer president in 2009. Attempting to bring Sony back from the brink, Stringer focused his efforts on efficiency gains and cost cuts. However, Sony's major consumer electronics industry continued to shrink, and the corporation posted unprecedented losses. Stringer left his position in 2012, and the video game division executive, Hirai Kazuo, took them over. Sony, under his leadership, refocused on consumer electronics and slashed costs by selling off diverse real estate holdings and other assets. One notable event was the 2013 sale of Sony's New York City headquarters for almost $1 billion. Sony's core businesses as of the year 2022 are the following games and networks, music and movies, electronics products and solutions, imaging and sensing solutions, financial services, and others. Columbia Records is a subsidiary of Sony Music Group, which is both a holding company for Sony's music businesses and a subsidiary of Sony Music Entertainment Japan. That's all for today's video. Do you have a PlayStation? Which games are your favorite? Tell us in the comment section below. Big Company Business will be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.